Like we've definitely gotten I, better the more we do it. Maybe a little bit. I'll just yeah, not not a lot better, but you know. We've gotten so good that we did not even rate the last movie. <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> oh man. That's all right. We're just winging it at this point. Wow. Oh. Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan. I seen that. You got a movie there, sir? I do have a movie. All right. So let me whip out some trivia. I, I believe that you've seen this movie, but there is a chance that you maybe have not. Okay. But I want to say that you have. Um, okay. So at the time, it was the highest grossing live action film released under Walt Disney Pictures. At the time, live action Disney. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think what live action Disney movies are it- there. Because I'm guessing it's in the 90s. It is in the 90s. I will say, though, that I would not have guessed that this would have been, like, one of their higher grossing movies. Is it a princess movie? No. Milo Notice. That's not Disney. I don't know. What's the next piece? All right. This is the... All right, let's see. Hold on. This is the final John Candy starring film to be released before he died of a heart attack five months later. Uncle Buck. No, Uncle Buck was like, nah, a few years earlier. Yeah. Also, a great John Candy movie. That is a good one. What's, okay, and I got, I got one more. And this one should probably give it away. Okay. This is the same Winter Olympics that Eddie the Eagle uh, was a part of in 1988. <laughs> cool runnings. Cool running. You dead, now, man. You, you've seen this movie, right? Yeah, I love this movie. Sanka, you're dead. <laughs> I've not seen this movie in a long time. Oh, I thought you were going to say you haven't seen it. Yeah, I have not seen this movie. You're just quoting it. Yeah. Uh, we watched this movie a lot as kids. Yeah. Uh, this is one of Dante's favorite movies, so we used to watch it a lot. Mm. Um, what are your thoughts on this movie? Uh, this is really good. I don't, I don't really? remember why I think that. Though. That surprises me. I thought you would have hated it. <laughs> no, I like it. I enjoyed it. I haven't seen it for a long time, and I'm afraid right. if I watch it again, I won't like it. Uh, no, I think it holds up. Do you? When was the last time you've seen it? It's been a while. It's probably been, jeez, it's probably been at least 10 years. Yeah. I, Maybe 15 years. I, yeah, I don't. But, go ahead. I don't know. I've seen it so many times that I could like vividly remember almost the whole movie, and like just thinking about the funny scenes are so funny. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I just feel it's, like it's it's nineteen nineties funny, and that's very different than yeah, actually but funny. It's so funny. No, nineties were a funny time. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I don't think it would hold up for me. I, th- I think if I watched it now, I, I don't think I would enjoy it. Uh, could be. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't want to risk it because I really like it. Yeah, I don't want to ruin this. This is unprecedented. <laughs> uh, but, uh, can you sing the song? Some people say they know they can't believe. Jamaica, we have a bobsled team. We got the one Doris and the one Junior. Uh, so I don't remember the rest. Something, something, something. That was actually pretty good. I'm impressed. Um, everyone, so do, do you? Would you have remembered that? No, because I know that that song is famous out, or not famous, but popular outside of. Yeah. Like, so, people just know that song. So this is based off of a true story, right? Correct. A hundred percent. And originally... Shot for shot. They all were trying to be track stars in the summer Olympics. Yes. And one Correct. of them 
All right. Well, I guess three of them. One of them was not going to be a track star. No, one of them was just like the village idiot. Yeah. And uh, one person tripped and messed up the two other guys and ruined their yeah, chances. Yeah, they were in their qualifying rounds, and they were not able to move on and become Olympic sprinters. Yeah. And John, but they were all, like, super fast. John Candy owned a bar on the island in Jamaica, and he yes. was a um, retired bobsledder who got shamed out of the Olympics. He was disgraced for... Putting weights in the, the front. Yeah. yeah, so actually, that's funny that that comes up. So while going through the trivia, I read that it is not illegal to put weights in your bobsled because uh, as long as you are at a certain weight, right? You can you can't exceed a certain weight. So like if your bobsled, if your body, if you came in underweight, uh-huh. you can add up. You know, you can put whatever you want in it to get up to that weight. You just can't be higher than that. Yeah. So unless that's what he did, which I don't think he would even. I, I I'm sure they checked that, and what he did was not illegal. Well, I think he cheated, though. I think he put in extra weight. But when they... I don't know. Perhaps. I, I, I don't remember the specifics of all that. Cause like I said, it, it's been a while. Well, they took... I they understand it as a kid. I'm pretty sure they stripped his medal from him. Oh, yeah. He had like three medals or two gold medals or something like that. And they took them. Yeah. But anyway, so... The guys who were trying to get to the Olympics uh, couldn't make it because they fell down. And so they meet John Candy, and John Candy decides he'll teach them how to bobsled so they can go to the Winter Olympics. And uh, they train on a hill in just like a go-kart, basically. And Yeah, bas- the reason it's so absurd is because where they're from, Jamaica. they've never even seen snow. Yeah. Well, I don't know if all of Jamaica doesn't get snow. At least where they are specifically, I feel, they don't get snow. I feel pretty good about saying Jamaica doesn't get snow. It's it, it could be true, but mm-hmm. uh, so they don't. You know, they've never even been in snow, yeah. and yet they're going to have a bobsled team represent them in the Olympics. It's absurd. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, so they practice is a go kart. They do well and get pretty far. But then they crash in the final race and end up carrying their bobsled across. And it's a moral victory similar to Rocky more than an actual victory, which is what everyone actually wants. Yeah, no, it definitely was not any type of real actual victory. No. They did. What do you think is more important, moral victories or actual victories? Uh, actual victories. Yeah. But so what, they what? failed. Why do movies always try to play it off like moral victories are the way to go? Because they don't... There's not enough good uh, stories? Either that, or it, it's like the uh, handing out the participation trophies. They don't want people to focus on the winning. And I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm going to make it up <laughs> as I go. I realize now it makes no sense, and I would like it stricken from the record. Nope. I'm going to play it twice. It's like the uh, handing out the participation trophies. They don't want people to focus on the winning. And I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm going to make it up as I go. <laughs> I realize now it makes no sense, and I would like it stricken from the record. Nope. I'm going to play it twice. Um, play it twice. Maybe that'll, that'll sink in. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I that know. maybe there's just too many losers. Like, not losers as in, like, oh, you're a loser person, but people who d- just can't win. And so yeah. uh if every movie was about people who won, then it wouldn't be relatable. This is true. Um, But I like, I like, I, I, I'm okay with the moral victories in a story that's based on a true story. You yeah. know, like, don't change anything. If they really didn't win, but they had had their moral victory, then cool. Yeah. But I'm also, you know, I'm also cool with people like just losing like yeah. uh bad news bears, right? They mm-hmm. lose. 
And it, but it's like, it's good. It's, it, it makes it, and, and they don't even just like lose because they're bad. I don't know if you remember the championship game in Bad News Bears. Do you remember it? No. So they're down by like four runs, right? Mm-hmm. And it's almost over. And through a series of flukes and like crazy events, they get bases loaded and their best hitter comes up to bat and he smashes one deep in like in the gap in the outfield. And it's just like clearing the bases and it's like they're scoring, they're getting all these runs and he's like trying to turn it into an inside the park home run and it gets thrown out at home plate and isn't able to win the game. <laughs> it's not like they got destroyed. It's like they brought it up, you know, they were getting beat and they brought it back just close enough and then it was saturated. Well, I played, I played Little League one year growing up and, right. uh, we were the worst team in the whole league. The, I think it was like 11 and 12 year olds or 12 and 13 year olds. We had was the, this the one at Southwest. Yeah. We had Red the, Sox. yeah, the Red Sox. I was on the Red Sox. We had a losing record. Uh, we were at the bottom, but because there was only like eight teams, we made it to the playoffs. Yeah. yeah everyone made the playoffs in that one. And we made it to the championship. We beat the other teams and made it all the way to the championship <laughs> game. And then, <laughs> We got spanked so hard. Like, <laughs> we, I, I want to say we lost like 12 to zero or something like that. We wow. had no chance and just got destroyed. And to me, that, that was, I mean, that was like a movie, you know, like we, we sucked the whole season, but we came back, made it to the championship, but then real life came in and was like, nope, sorry. And just, we got wrecked. That is awesome. Yeah. That is like real life bad news bears. Yeah, basically. Except, uh, we weren't, our coach wasn't drunk and we weren't a bunch of racists. Well, I don't know. There might have been racists. It was Bakersfield, but, uh, we weren't openly racist. <laughs> like uh, the bad news bears. Oh, man. But, uh, so that, re- that reminds me. You've seen the movie Dodgeball. I yes. Assume. Yeah. Have you seen the alternate ending? No. So it's pretty funny. Okay, so you know how it ends. It's a face-off between uh, Vince Vaughn and Ben Stiller. And uh-huh. Vince Vaughn, and and they, you know, and they win. Blah blah blah. They win all the money. Whatever happens. There's an alternate ending to where they're standing there, and when Ben Ben Stiller throws a ball and just drills Vince Vaughn, and they lose, and like it ends with like the purple cobras are like celebrating in like slow motion and then that's just the end of the movie. <laughs> they and it just shows that. Vince Vaughn they, it just shows Vince Vaughn just standing there like really? <laughs> they came all this way and then they lost. It's pretty funny. Yeah, that would have been good. I I enjoy movies that will are willing to go against to the trend. That. Yeah. Like Yeah. Um I still don't really you know, understand they, the movie. Uh, like I, I saw it a long time ago. But no country for old men. I think yeah, yeah, that's a good one. You have the 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 protagonist going throughout the movie trying to find right. the, the bad guy the whole time, and then he just dies. Like they don't really show it; he's just dead. And it's like, oh, just- well, no, 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 no. So, kind of. So you got the main dude, yeah, and he's being chased by the bad guy, and then you got Tommy Lee Jones is chasing the bad guy. Yeah. So you kind of, you almost have two protagonists. Sure. But I, if, you can, if, if you can even call the first guy protagonist, and we stole the money. But yeah, he's the guy that we're essentially following the whole movie. And then in the last scene, he's just dead. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like it like just, a, yeah. He, the movie is setting it up to be like, this guy is going to take care of everything. This guy is going to solve the problem. This guy is going to be victorious in the end. But then they just kill him unceremoniously. I, I I don't know why I even tried to say that word. I, I knew it. I knew it I is, wasn't gonna be able to say it before I started, and I still was like, "I'm gonna do yeah. it. I'm just charging ahead." But it is uh, a good description of it because it's not like there's not even a death scene or anything. He's just dead because yeah. that's kind of just how real life is. Yeah, yeah. I think about People it all the time. I think die. about <laughs> uh, living here. It's like in the top five worst places to drive like and stay alive it has one of the worst right. death rates on the roads 
Um, and you just, there's just nothing you can do. Like if someone, if someone is going to hit you, especially if you're on like a motorcycle or on a bicycle, if someone is going to hit you with their car, you don't yeah. get a warning. You don't, the music doesn't change. You just die. That's it. Yep. It's just, that's, that's it. And, uh, I appreciate in that movie, like I didn't really, I didn't enjoy the movie. No country for women. No. no, I, it was really slow and I was a lot younger. It is very slow. Um, so I didn't quite appreciate it at the time. I, it might be better now if I saw it again, but that them doing that, I really appreciated. Like, no, this is, this is kind of how ha- it can happen. Like you feel like you right. are the hero because it's your point of view, but maybe you're just the cannon fodder. You could die any second. This got yeah, really and- dark. <laughs> True, it, and it's it's the same. It does apply. The same with the sports movies is it, it's less exciting when it's like no matter what's happening, you know that the good guys are going to win. Mm. You know they're going to win the game, or, and it, it's like it makes any moment that where it seems like they won't like not feel as real yeah. because you know that they are. Yeah, it it's well, kind of I yeah. Mean, like we did, we talked about Conor McGregor on the Rocky episode and right. his story was like, it, it could have been a movie, right? If he would have beat McGregor, it's like he, he was homeless and he started fighting and then he worked his way up in the UFC, became the first two time champion and then challenged the greatest boxer of all time to a boxing fight outside of his, yeah. And yeah. then he went and lost. And he he got handled. Did you watch the fight? I've seen the highlights. Highlights. So the first few rounds, he looked really good. Then he got tired. And McGregor just tore him apart. There was, yeah. there was a little bit of controversy about the stoppage. But there was no controversy about the winner. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't like, like when Mayweather and uh, the other dude fought. What was that? I can't even think of his name. Uh, like last Pacquiao? year or whatever it was. The Pacquiao? Yeah. Where everyone was like, no, Pacquiao should have won this and that. Refs or blah, 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 judges. I don't know. I know. He's, like, it wasn't. There's, the, it everyone wasn't was no like, contest. you should have. Like, my opinion was it should have either stopped, you know, 30 seconds earlier or gone on for another minute. Because 30 seconds earlier, he was in a lot more danger than at the point they stopped it. He was like making right. a recovery. He was, the momentum was going back in his favor. I mean, until he got hit again, but he was starting to make a miss. You know, he was dodging shots. And so it was like, they had a point 30 seconds before, maybe 10 seconds before. It was like, okay, now you stop it. But to stop it there was like, oh, this is, he was making progress back. Like, that seems a little unfair. But right. if that fight would have gone on another round, it would have been the exact same thing. He had, I mean, he was, yeah. he was done, you know, at least it, it appeared that way. Um, but the point of all of that, bring, even bringing him up is that life doesn't work out to be like movies all the time. And that's what makes things like, uh, that hockey movie miracle. So cool yeah. is that sometimes David beats Goliath and that's what makes it a great story. But movies. Right are always trying to find that David and Goliath thing and is like oversaturating it. Yeah. I will say though, when, when now that you kind of do have these movies, sports movies specifically uh-huh. where the good guys lose sometime or, you know, the protagonists lose, they don't not always win. It does make it a little more exciting when you do watch the movie and they do win that, you know, cause then it's like, okay, now, I know that they make movies where they might not win. Like the one that comes to my head is, uh, we are Marshall, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're playing that last game and it's not even really a game that means anything like season wise. It's just big moment for the team. Yeah. And it's, it's like they, there's a good chance that they don't win and then they do. And it feels like it didn't feel like I was like, well, yeah, obviously they're going to win. Yeah. Like it felt like, I don't know, it felt more real. Mm. Ah, I guess it is real, so. And the, I think the cool thing about Cool Runnings is it came out before all these other movies where you have, 
I don't know how to make this not sound racist, but the, a white guy helping out black kids. Like, I feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that has been, is almost a trope now. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's, like, oh, it's for sure a trope. Where, and a lot of it is true story based, so it's a, a little right. diff- different, but it's, I don't know. Maybe not so much no, even. I know what you're saying. White guy and black kids, but it's like the teacher. White guy and minority. Yeah, well, maybe not because, like, I'm thinking of Coach Carter, right? And that kind of follows the okay. same thing, but you know, obviously Samuel L. Jackson is black. But it's like, oh yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know. It's there's just something about it that it's it gets. No, I, I, I do, I understand what you're saying. The Thank story cool feels played out, I guess, is my point. That, right. th- that, and the same, I feel the exact same way about a lot of the fish out of water type stories of, uh, mm-hmm. they did it a lot with, um, never back down. Like, I never saw that one. Yeah, it's not very good, but if this guy shows up and, uh, gets beat up and then gets involved with his underground fight ring and he's the worst. And then he gets a little better and he beats someone and gets a little better and beats someone. And then he, he goes back and beats the guy who originally beat him up. And it's like this big victory, kind of like karate kid. Oh, so it's karate kid. Yeah, basically. And they, they did that like a ton of times over and over and over. Just they're like, okay, well let's just tell this story again, but we need a different thing. So let's do dance or let's do, yeah, you know, MMA or let's do, you know, whatever. It's just like rapping, you, rapping. You gotta, you gotta change the structure up somewhat. You gotta do something different and to make it interesting, but it's hard because there's not that many ideas, I guess. This is true. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is probably one of my favorite John Candy movies besides maybe planes, trains and automobiles. And Uncle Buck. Oh, he, he's got so many good movies. Yeah, it's too bad he passed away. I uh, know. I always kind of get John Candy and John Goodman confused. Oh, I, I used to get John, for some reason, I used to get John Candy and Chris Farley confused. Yeah, well, they died around the same time. Yeah, it was pretty close. But uh, John Goodman's character in Roseanne died the same time around the same time John Candy died. And so in my head, I always kind of like change that Associate around. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was weird. So, I mean, yeah. So John Candy died in 94. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, what, six. I didn't know who he was at the time, but like, as I grew up and I watched these John Candy movies, I had no idea that he was dead. I don't know. Why? I guess it's just not something that my parents would tell me. Yeah. Hey, just so you know, John Candy. <laughs> so I remember when I found out, it was probably like late 90s, you know, and I think my dad had mentioned it or something like that. And I was like devastated, mm. even though he had died like six or seven years earlier. Yeah. To me, he had just died. Yeah. Because I had no idea he was dead. I was like, no, how? What happened? That that happened with my great grandma. Have I told you this story? I, was, I don't think so. So you know how I don't live in America. Uh, I do. Yes, yeah, sounds familiar. And uh, so I have to get all my information about what's going on from my family. They, you know, they tell me what's happening. Right. Uh, and so, with my parents having had me so young, my mom was fifteen, my dad was sixteen when they got pregnant with me. I have known all almost all of my great grandparents, right? Um, which is you know somewhat rare. Not a lot of people get to know their great grandparents, but um. Oh yeah. No. And uh, so I was having a conversation when my dad was out visiting, and I was talking uh-huh. to one of my friends, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I, you know, I still have one of my great grandmas is still alive," and my dad just like he looked at me and kind of went a couple shades paler. <laughs> And he's like, oh man, are you joking? And I was like, no. <laughs> oh, no. And he said, uh, your great grandma died last year. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, oh, she, she passed away last year, like almost a year to the day. 
And I was like, right. nobody, no, nobody told me. And, uh, they all swear that someone else told me, like, I think my mom says my Everyone dad told me. Else did it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, oh, never knew. I knew she was sick. Which I knew she was, was this? this is my, um, my mom's dad's mom. Okay. I don't think I've met her. Then. No, she, I hardly ever met her. She, uh, so my grandpa is Mexican, right? And, right. uh, he grew up speaking Spanish. Like my, my mom's maiden name is Ortega. So they're like real, right. real Mexican. Um, and my great grandma, she would come to Thanksgiving and she would come to Christmas. Uh, and only ever speak Spanish. I didn't know until after oh, she really? passed away that she was fluent in English. I never once had a conversation with her because she, uh, <laughs> I don't think she That's liked how this she very got much. away with not talking to kids. Yeah, probably. But, uh, oh gosh. So yeah, that happened to huh. me. Basically, your story of John Candy was my great grandma. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. But if cool runnings, let's, uh, <laughs> maybe this episode was a little darker than I anticipated it getting. And it's about to get darker. If this show, if this movie, Cool Runnings comes on, what are you going to do? Oh, I'll watch it. Yeah. I, Absolutely. I'm on the fence. You're going to preserve it? Yeah, maybe. That might, that seems like the better way to go. I feel like if I watch it, I'll just like it less. So I might have to just skip it. Isn't it okay though to not like a movie as an adult that you liked as a kid? Yeah. As long as you liked it at some point. Yeah. Then... But as of right now, I enjoy it. I have fond memories of it. I feel like if right. I go back and rewatch it, it's going to taint those fond memories. Ah, uh, I see. You know what I mean? I it, do. It's like when you have a good friend from, you know, when you're growing up and then you find stuff out about them that, uh. Like all the movies that I like? Yeah, but I was thinking of something different, but, you know, changes your opinion of them. It kind of really taints that relationship. True. So instead, if you have a friend that you like from your childhood, don't ever talk to them again. <laughs> yeah, basically. Basically. Remember them how they were. Um. So I have a movie that I would like to see. And okay, what you got? It is Boyhood. Have you seen Boyhood? No, which one is that? Boyhood is, uh, I don't know who directed it, but it has, oh, what's the guy's name? Why can't I think of it now? Um, Robin Williams. No, Kevin, it's not Kevin Bacon, Christian Slater. Christian Slater, oh. they're like the same okay. person from the 90s. If you look at the movies, they're, they're pretty interchangeable. Um, Kevin Bacon and Christian Slater? Yeah. Maybe. Um, this is a movie that they shot over 12 years. So every year, the director would show 12 up. 12 years. Would show up and talk or film the story. And so the kid grew up on the screen. It started when he was like seven and ended when he was 18. Right. And it, it's supposed to be pretty interesting to see the kid actually grow up in the movie instead of getting a new so actor to be the it's same. It's not character. a documentary? It's not a documentary. It's all. It's a, it's a movie. It's a fiction. Um, but it, it, it progresses throughout the years. And it, I really? heard, I heard it's not that good. Um, I heard that it's, it, just... it's long and kind of slow, but the concept is so interesting to me that I want to see it. Yeah. Huh. Cause there's a, there's a documentary called Seven Up. Have you heard of that? I don't know. I'm wondering if that's what I would, is that what the, when the guy would interview like the group of kids? Yeah. Yeah. And then he would interview them every seven years, couple years. Seven every, years. Oh, seven years. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, I, I did, I don't, I didn't see it. I think I saw a trailer for it and I, I always thought that looked interesting. I just haven't got around to seeing it. Yeah. So he started at when they were seven and then he this went is back. from like the seventies, right? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty old. Mm hmm. He went back when they were 14. He went back when they were 21. And each time he put out a new documentary, um, or at least like a new TV special or something. And, uh, oh, okay. when I saw it, it was their 49 at the point. Oh, and, wow. uh, it, were they all still alive? No spoilers. Not, Never mind. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> it's not very good. It's really, it's not, it's, they're British and, uh, yeah. So they're, they're, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Their life is so different. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah. 
It doesn't. I don't relate to them very well. Um, and then they're you don't older. relate to British kids? Not really. <laughs> they're older, <laughs> so not only are they from a different culture and a different time, but they're. It's just really hard to kind of like relate to their life. Um, right. And I don't. I don't think the documentary is made that well, but the concept is super interesting. Like it's the, yeah, it's all about the concept. Yeah. But it, so he'll he'll interview. You know, they'll cut in clips, and it'll be like. The seven year old, like, Oh, I want to be a doctor when I get older. And then it jumps, you know, 45 years or whatever it is, 42 years. And the guy's like right. strung out on drugs or, you know, something like that. I don't remember exactly, but right. it's just like, it's more depressing than I think it's interesting because you kind of see the failures of life, but and uh, how no one gets to be what they wanted to be as a kid. Yeah, pretty much. What did you want to be as a kid? Uh, Power Ranger. Nice. I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle when I was really little. Yeah, <laughs> I did want to be a Power Ranger when I was younger, but then I think around kindergarten, first grade, I was like, nah, enough of this kiddie stuff. I need to be a Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys want to get a hold of us, you can tweet us at I Seen That Pod or me directly at Alan RJR. I'm at Taylor Enix. Spelled like how it looks. And then if you, <laughs> there you go. That's a good way to explain it. Um, if you'd like to support our show, you can go over to Patreon and vote for Taylor or I for a dollar. Um, who is the better person, who you enjoy more, who you think is, uh, just more valuable to humanity. Um, and doing that, and doing that, you also get access to the, our episodes in advance. So you get to be a special person in our special club. Yeah. And that is pretty cool.